Ahem, <clears throat> hello, it's been a while since we've gone live. Happy holidays to everybody. We are here once again on the um, Hallie Quinn Show, where we hop on and we discuss anything related to the healing journey, anything related to the self-love journey, and just inner growth healing overall. So the t topic today is about micromanaging. Have you ever experienced being micromanaged? Or are you the person who's micromanaging, right? There's two sides of that, and why is that? So we have our own personal um, experiences with that and just sharing how it actually causes resistance. So let's get into it, let's get into it. Hallie, um, what inspired <laughs> this topic and what are your feelings and your thoughts with um, micromanagement, micromanaging? and then how it leads to resistance. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Yay. <laughs> well, I was listening to a podcast yesterday and it was about prosperity. Mm. And it was a spiritual, it was a Kabbalah podcast, Jewish mysticism. And they were talking about how any area of our life that we find ourselves trying to micromanage, like trying to exert a lot of control over and trying to be very like, on top of we build a field of resistance and we actually block the flow of energy so that can be they were talking about it with prosperity but they were like that can also be with love that can be with the, the people your friendships the people in your life mm -hmm. you know and so the the message was to to bring in more flow of abundance of prosperity like don't be so controlling. Yeah. Don't be so like tightly gripping to the numbers. Don't be so even like, with that. Look at that motion. Like, why does that feel? Why does that? How does that feel? Ooh, ooh. Yeah. yeah. Like, whew. Just let it go. Like, release. Like, give it some space to flow. And I think this is especially important in our relationships too, right? It's like when we when we're like wanting for certain outcomes to manifest or to happen or to play out we can get very controlling about those specific expectations that we have about others mm -hmm. and so i was in a situation today where someone in my family really is having a hard time with this covid thing mm -hmm. um and they keep <laughs> calling me every day to like micromanage my experience but like I'm living my experience. And so I just had to say like you, you like you don't have control over other people. I'm sorry. I know you're scared, but like mm -hmm. this isn't something that you can control through me and the more that I'm getting those that micromanagement energy, the more I'm wanting to like push back and distance myself and not be in in contact and not be in conversation. So I'm feeling myself on the receiving end of being micromanaged but I also know that there are areas of my life that I try and micromanage mm. and whenever I'm in that mode I'm in like a stuck resistant place yeah. until I can like bring some surrender into it oh yes and I know you've been big with surrendering also it's almost like your go-to surrender mm -hmm. trust let God let the universe just work its thing yeah. and in the meantime let me just continue to give myself some space. Yeah. Um, how many of you can relate to that feeling micromanaged? And I love that you brought up yourself because then we get to see, are we micromanaging our own lives? Like, did, 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 like you need to do it like this, you need to do it like that. And even going deeper, where did we even learn that from? You know, mm -hmm. what were the examples that we were living with to like copy that behavior? And then now it's like how we live. Um, I can definitely relate and this is why you know, I'm healing with the relationships with my family right now because growing up with my parents, my parents were very micromanagey and of course they were doing the best that they could. And I just could recall memories of them checking on me all the time, making sure if I'm doing homework, um, if I did something wrong, like, no, don't do this. And even if I'm doing stuff in the kitchen, like you're doing this wrong, oh, do it like this, do it like that. And, <laughs> I have memories of both of my parents and I just give an example of just something simple of cooking in the kitchen like I'm doing my own thing or I'm choosing to help my mom cook she'll just like <laughs> watch me and say no 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 you gotta do it like this and I could just already feel the resistance 
feel building because I just want to step away or I just want to come in and be like, mom, back off. Yeah. Which is, you know, causing more friction. Yeah. Not of the flow. Mm -hmm. And when I think of flow, it's love, you know? It's accepting vibes and you're allowing everyone to be themselves. And there's just none of this, none of this. And um, and that's why I, and I, I'm able to have these conversations with my mom now, but back then I told, you know, I would tell my mom, you know, that's why I rebelled. That's why I went against everything that you said. Mm -hmm. And me being the first child, I broke all the rules. Like, I, I was scared of my dad, but at the same time, my dad being scary, meaning, like, you know, he was, um, you know, the one who would yell a lot and, like, <laughs> drown me and all this stuff. So I just remember just not giving an F and see the resistance, whether, see the resistance field, it can look like talking back, and then it can look like, yeah, literally removing yourself. Yeah. I was never home for this reason. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing about micromanagement is that it's a control tactic to try and feel safe. Yeah. And so if you aren't experiencing a sense of safety in the divine, if you don't trust life, if you don't trust God, if you don't trust yourself, then you're going to try and micromanage the, the externals around you. You're going to try and control other people. You're going to try and control, hyper control the circumstances of your life in order to feel safe inside of your life. That's so true. And so it's like, you know, we have to remember that like safety isn't something that comes through control. It mm. actually comes through letting go. It's so counter and like it, it doesn't yes. feel right because we think that we become more safe when we have more control, but we actually create more resistance. We create more separation. We create more like, mm -hmm. like what you were saying, you either want to like fight or you want a flight, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly, and it just continued to build friction and friction, and um, I love how you said it's kind of like counteracting, and it kind of, it forces you to look at yourself like, do I actually feel safe with myself? Yeah. You know, because the hard part is taking the focus away from other people doing what you want them to do so you can feel okay, but then see, and that there's a resistance of you doing it for yourself. Michelle says your safety in the surrender. Yeah, yeah. your safety's in the surrender of like, okay, I can't control them. They're probably going to stay that way for, I don't know for how long, but it's highly unlikely that I will witness some transformation right now. And the more that I continue to do this, the more, the more that I won't even have a chance to have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. You know, the moment, see, there's, there's certain awareness stages that you, one can go through when you say yes to the healing journey because you're practicing focusing on yourself. You're practicing focusing on what you need to flow. And, you know, it's, it's from my own personal experience, it's pretty freeing. It's pretty freeing. And you're actually seeing what built the gap and you're seeing what can close the gap. Mm -hmm. And with me repairing things with my family right now, I'm watching myself. I just need to see be a safe person for them to be around, mm -hmm. not con trying to control them and criticize them and tell them my two cents so that I can feel safe, so I can feel heard or whatnot. So what are, what are your principles of being a safe person for your family or for others? Shoot, I need to experience what it even feels like to be a safe person for myself, mm -hmm. meaning being more kind to myself here, right? Any criticism that needs to, I need to attend to that. So it's always being a safe person for myself because that will lead me to accept others for who they are, yeah. you know? The more that I understand myself, it's highly likely that I will naturally want to um, understand the next person and not judge them just how I'm not judging myself, mm -hmm. right? Love that question, yeah, like, so it's that's that's where that's where it starts everybody we know you hear it all the time and um if we haven't tried it out then how would we know that that's the way you know and yeah and you can see what kind of friction you have in your life amongst the relationships that you have right now right something is not working i think there's something too to just really honoring the fact that we're all so different Mm -hmm. And we all have very different approaches to life. We all have different approaches to communication. We yeah. all have different 
needs for space and connection. We all have different opinions. We all have different values. And so the more we can honor the differences instead of projecting our way as the way, you know, like just giving a lot of space for variety, mm-hmm. then you can recognize, then, you, then you're not like in a um, m- like me against them stance. Ooh, right? yes, that's huge. Because like all <laughs> ways are allowed, like all ideas are valid, all beliefs like can be brought to the table. Um, Very true. And then we don't have to control anything or anyone Mm. when we allow for each other to be different. Yeah. I kind of want to talk about, let's talk about what makes us feel safe. That's really important to identify with because, right, like what we just mentioned, when we don't feel safe, perhaps then we kind of latch onto others and like we need others others to behave a certain way, do this for us, do that for us so that we can feel okay. So Hallie, I know we ask this question a lot in our workshops actually, Um, what do you need to feel or have around you to feel safe? Like what does safety look like to you? I think for me, safety has a lot to do with being connected to my own passion and to my own joy, to my own light, like trusting in the things that I'm inspired by Mm. and like giving myself permission to go into them. Even if they feel random, like right now for example, I'm watching the Michael Jordan docu-series on mm. Netflix, and I'm so fucking inspired. <laughs> I love it. so inspired by Michael Jordan and the Bulls and basketball. I love it. So <laughs> my friend Tabari plays basketball, so we're going to go shoot hoops this weekend. And it's like one of these things where that's not necessarily directly connected to like my purpose work or my soul's mission, but it's lighting me up right now. So I'm like tending to that inspiration Mm -hmm. so that is a safety thing for me is that I'm staying connected to to my own inspiration so that I'm not trying to get my inspiration cup filled by other people's attention or validation of me you Mm know Um, and when I'm feeling like I'm taking control of my own like energy you know, and where I'm directing it and how I'm feeding it and how I'm growing it and fostering it and and rejuvenating it, then I feel safe within myself. Yeah, so would you say then, you know, if someone's trying to interrupt that flow, that that would would not be safe for you? So you need people and surroundings to kind of allow you to do that and like match, right? Like people, haters could slide into your DM and be like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. You're like, I'm doing me. <laughs> Hello. Well, I think that the, this is another important point. And Michelle, I don't know if she's still on, but we talk about this all the time, that there are certain areas of life that you have to keep so sacred within yourself and so careful about who you share percent. it with. Yes. And there are different friends who you can share different things with. And you, and you, you, you learn this through the act of being someone's friend. Like, what are areas of open and free sharing? And then what are areas where you just have to really, like, I I can't talk about this thing with this person, and that is okay. Yep. And there's, like, no problem with the relationship. This is just an area that, like, I have to really protect because any little ounce of judgment here is going to distort my own experience of my own truth, you know? Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. Thousand percent. Yeah. Right? And so we need to be aware, right? Like, okay, I can, I notice that when I talk about this subject, there's a block. Yeah. There's resistance. But when I talk about this, we flow. There's an opening. There's an opening. That's, 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 that's safety right there. Yeah. You know, and being hyper aware. And I almost want to say like you're, the way that you're processing and making these decisions, you're like, um, some may call it emotional intelligence, you know, some may call it, um, yeah, some something in there where you're really growing, whether it's a mental process, right, or like an emotional process. So cheers to you. Yeah, and you learn the hard way. Yeah, you of course. Learn, yeah, you like, learn by you, you learn by feeling stung <laughs> and by feeling judged by, yes. by people that you love who are just trying to protect you. That's yeah. the other thing. Like their judgment is coming from a place of love. But you also like learn through that of like, okay, but I have to, I have to be able to stand in my truth no matter what. Yeah. And so whatever that is, it might rub certain people the wrong way because they have experiences 
or they have this idea of what they think is best for me, but that's not necessarily what I feel is right for right. me in this moment. Right. And I might have been in agreement with them yesterday or last week, but now I'm in a new place mm -hmm. and I want to be, and this is where I am now mm -hmm. and I need to be here now without doubting myself so right yeah there's something that i always say is that like i'm doing the best that i can always you're doing the best uh, that you can always and you are doing the best that you can always that's just what always like levels it out for me i'm like you know what they're doing the best they can mm -hmm. <laughs> and so am i mm -hmm. and i'm going to continue to go the direction that I, that I need to go yeah right so yeah identifying where you feel safe and what you need to feel safe I love that tuning into inspiration and I almost feel like you're saying tuning into what helps makes you feel like you're growing and that you feel you know that feeling because you need to feel good right mm -hmm. like we talk about what's missing in this world and how can we do X Y and Z if we don't feel good here. well and I notice when I'm not um, taking responsibility for my own inspiration mm. that I start to feel that feeling of needing to micromanage there we go you know, it, 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 it comes back. Yeah. Like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> Noted. Because <laughs> when one time I was working with a life coach and she taught me that inspiration comes from in spirit. Love it. Right? It's something that we receive from from the divine, and so that is being surrendered. Like allowing for inspiration is the opposite of being in a micromanaged position. Mm. So you really can't be like in this hyper control mode and like filled with inspiration at the same time. That you is have to make very a choice. true. Mm. Can't be inspired and at the same time micromanaging somebody. You can. So it means it does not belong together. Yeah. It doesn't work well together, right? You're either in one spectrum or the other and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm working on a project right now and I, I have a business coach that I'm working with and yesterday we had this session because I'm meeting some resistance blocks because I have had these ideas or expectations. I've been wanting to fulfill mm. my assignments in a way that isn't actually natural for me. Mm. And so to yesterday on the call, she was like, all right, well, what's your new approach? And I was like, to be wide open to like how spirit wants to move this through me. Wow, I love that. And to like let go of the ideas of how I think this needs to look or what format or like how to sell my program, like to let all of that go and just be natural and like be attuned, be attuned to like when I get inspired and to just like answer that call. So it's it's a it's a really nice shift and this is the type of shift that I have to remind myself in every area of life like mm. get back into the flow of the universe trust it and see what happens be interested right i love that by receiving the what is it in spirit in spirit receiving what inspires you and actually to allow it for you to receive it and then move with it you can already see there's growth happening and you're becoming a better person because of it Right. Yeah. Um, so I love this conversation of what causes one to micromanage and what causes one to actually be on the other end where you're focusing on your growth and um, focusing on what makes you feel safe. Yes. All right. That I love that conversation. So good. We do have a workshop for this month is last workshop of 2020. It is um, inner child creative healing yes inner child creative healing we're going to work with inner child we this is our second time doing a creative workshop with working with the inner child and um yeah we really get to explore that so yeah the first one we worked with the inner critic yes inner critic mm -hmm. so this, this is the inner child with the inner child yes yeah. so if you're interested in joining we have a few few left um just click click above there and um, you can find more information all righty with that said we will see you uh next week and um thank you for joining us much love bye